Hi guys, so I am making some candy corn seed bead earrings tonight. And these are using um, two different sizes of seed beads. I just got the multi-packs, the larger size, which is the 6O or 6 aught seed bead. And then I got this smaller size, which was, for me, in my case, the 8 or 8 aught seed bead. When you get these multi packs of seed beads, a lot of times there will be imperfect beads. You know, there'll be some broken beads or misshapen beads or whatnot. And then I also got some check glass seed beads in sort of candy, can candy corn colors. It's still, it's the yellow and the orange and the white, but being that they're check glass seed beads they're going to be a little bit more opaque whereas these are very bright. The wire that I'm using is a silver tone wire and it is a 26 gauge it is working nicely because I'm using the smaller seed bead in here. If I were only using these 60 seed beads that are the larger size this wire that is a 24 gauge would be just fine. The smaller the number on the artistic wire means the wire is actually larger. So if you have really tiny seed beads, you're going to want um, 26 or even possibly a 28 gauge artistic wire, depending on how small your smallest beads are. So now I'm going to make my second candy corn earring and I'm going to show you how I do the wrap for the bale. What I've got so far is the layer of yellow and orange. Looking side by side, you can see I'm trying to keep it as tight as possible up against the next level. I don't want big bows in my wire on the sides, so that's why I like to use these little eight aught seed beads mixing in with the six aught because it, it fills in the gaps and it looks cleaner. It doesn't leave big huge gaps on the side and your wire is not as noticeable. I'm going to get my second layer of orange. I want to have my small eight and I want two of the larger orange together and then end it with another small eight seed bead. I'm going to take the opposite end of my wire and feed it through all of those beads together just like that and then pull these through tightly as you can because the goal is you want them to tear nicely as you go up so I'm trying to pull them to as tightly as I can to where I've got minimal wire showing through on the sides. Be careful as you pull, pull these though that you're not going to cut your hands. You also may prefer to use some gloves. There we go. Want to feed on a small white, a six, uh, the larger six size white and another small white. So take three of those lovelies and then take the opposite wire feed them through all three of those pulling down or pushing pulling it's whatever works easier for you. Okay problem with these seed beads as you can tell right there those candy corns are not going to look exactly the same and the reason is not every seed bead looks exactly the same as far as the size even though you're using a 60 and an 80 it's not necessarily going to perform the same way the whole size is standard but the bead itself is not exact I've got a lot of wire left so I've pinched it together at the top here of the white, I just pinched it together with my fingers, pulled the wire straight up, and now I'm just going to twist to create the bail, like what I've got here on this one. I'm going to twist it up about, eh, about an inch and a half, and then cut off the excess.
your V up here, you want it centered as you're twisting. Keep twisting away. The tighter you twist it down there, the more neat it looks. So like, like that. If you're going to do earrings, you kind of want a small loop. You don't want a really large loop unless you plan on making this, um, say, a pendant for a necklace. I'm going to go ahead and take my flush cutters and just cut off the excess here because it's getting in my way. So I've got about two inches of this wire left here. You've got to decide which way you want this to be. I think I want mine to hang this way. Grab it from the er, from the end and bend it back to where you have a 90 degree angle. And then you want to take your round nose pliers right where you have the bend and depending on, especially if you're making a matching set, depending on the size of the bell that you want, I had mine on this first earring on this spot. Now if you always want to make the same size loop every time you can take a sharpie marker and mark where wherever on your round nose pliers that you prefer the size of your loop. Now because of this being an earring I want to try to match it as best as I can so I'm going to put my wire for this on that same area and try to make the same size loop. Yep. So I'm just going to pin this over. I'm going to turn now my pliers to the upward position here so that I've got room to wrap. So you're just wrapping around that base and then you're just going to take your flush cutters and cut that tail off and tuck it in. I am going to take my bent nose pliers and my flat nose pliers along with some French style ear wires and four millimeter jump rings and the reason why I'm doing that is because the way that my bell is situated there's the front of the ear wire if I put this directly onto the ear wire without the aid of a jump ring it would hang sideways I'm using the smaller ones because it's less of a gap in between my earring and the ear wire We got to the other one. Yep. Delicious. <laughs>